You are listening to the Intelligent Vocalist Podcast, episode 150. Welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist with John Henney. This is the podcast dedicated to help you be a smarter, better, more informed singer. And now, your host for the Intelligent Vocalist, John Henney. Hey there, this is John Henney. Welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Vocalist. I do so appreciate you spending your precious listening time with me. Ah, yes, mixed voice. Mix is one of those things that drives singers crazy, uh, gets voice teachers in arguments, and keeps voice teachers in business. I've talked about mix a lot. Very simply, it is that area of the voice between your lower and upper register. Uh, It's an area of transition, and it's an area of natural instability. And much of what you do as a singer is learn to negotiate this transition. And very often, you will find notes above this transition easier to sing, which uh, will drive singers crazy. Because you would think the higher the note, the harder it is to sing. But that that transition is a really, really tricky one. It tends to show itself in the female voice. There are debates on where exactly uh, it is. It will change from voice to voice. Also, different vowels, you'll, you'll start that mix process a little sooner or later. It's traditionally around the G above middle C or A flat above middle C for women is where it starts. And then you've kind of handed over and you're starting to go into that upper register. You're getting out of that, that mix zone by about the D5, the D that's an octave um, above middle C. For men, that, that mix voice will tend to start on the D or E flat above middle C, and you're leaving that by the A flat above that, uh, A flat four. Again, it's it can be a little different uh, for each singer and the vowel that you're singing, but essentially there are two things that are happening there. You're having a change in dominant vocal fold muscle. You have muscles within the vocal folds that when they contract, they make the cords short and fat. Those are your TA or thyroid muscles. And then you have muscles that pull, stretch, and thin the vocal folds, your cricothyroid muscles. Those muscles are more engaged in higher tones. And the, the muscles within the folds, the TA muscles, are more engaged in the lower tones. And through the mix area, you're, you're going from, as you ascend, as you go up, you're going from a dominant TA or the, the muscles within the folds themselves to a dominant CT, the muscles outside the vocal folds that stretch and thin. But you're also going through a change in resonance. You are going from a more, and this is oversimplified, so if you know this stuff, um, I know, but your, your lower resonance boost in your chest voice is more associated with the throat, um, And as you ascend, it becomes a more mouth-dominating resonator uh, as you hand over. Uh, This interaction of your resonance chambers and the sound waves and the parts of the sound waves, the harmonics. And I've, I've talked about it before. You don't, we don't need to get too, too deep into it. Just know that there's a shift in muscle and there's a shift in resonance or where the voice, the energy is being boosted and the interaction of the sound wave with your resonators. And in those handovers, we get into this instability and we get into all areas of our nervous system wanting to grab, let go And that just completely uh, plays against our goal of smoothly going through this transition or finding this mixed voice. Now, what usually happens is the voice will fall to one of two common uh, settings. It's either going to go to whoop, where it's going to fall apart, or it's going to go to the yell, 
hey, where it's going to start to grab. And you will find yourself in a tug of war between those two voices. And what we want to do is find the area between the, the whoop, that falsetto, and that yell. And for me, everything in between those two extremes is mix. And there are different shades of mix. The closer you go to whoop, it's a, it's a lighter, gentler mix. The closer you go to yell, it's a more intense, uh, belty mix. And I consider uh, belt... I consider that that uh, that place just under the yell to be belt, a, a mixed belt. Uh, people sometimes think that mix has to be this light or weaker sound. It doesn't. It can be very intense. The danger is if you go all the way to the belt uh, or the yell, the shout mechanism will kick in, uh, the nervous system will jam up, and that tends to be uh, where most singers get in trouble, and they start to find themselves in uh, vocal crisis because the chords are just slamming together and they're really muscling up. Because the other option, that whoop, that that flip, singers really resist. Um, they feel like, well, sometimes it happens involuntarily and it's a crack, but they feel going into that is just, just so weak and not what they want to do. They will go the other way and they will go into uh, the yell. So that's my... My first reason you're not finding mix is you are fighting between those two extremes. You're just going from one to the other. And when you're practicing, you'll, you'll go into the whoop and you'll say, okay, that's too weak. And then you just, the next exercise, you go into the yell and you say, okay, that hurts. I need to back that off. And then you're right back into the whoop and you're just back and forth between the two extremes. And those two extremes are not mix. Mix lives in between. So some of the key ways to getting in there, and, and this is the, the next mistake I see people make, it is controlling vowels. And very often singers are just going in on vowels that are far too wide. That's not to say that all your vowels when you're singing in a mix have to be really closed down. But when you're first finding it, you're better off having more narrow or rounded vowels. Now, if you take the vowels too narrow, you're going to tend to go into the whoop. If you go to uh, a really closed oo or e, you're not going to find the intensity that you want. Although those vowels can be really good if you're really struggling with over-muscling, you can use those temporarily to, to bypass that. But centered vowels really help. Um, n as in nook. M as in mum, those those work really really well. So I, I would for a little while just just work on those more rounded more, more rounded more centered vowels and stay away from those wide open vowels like um, ah and ah. They will probably want to engage that shout mechanism too much. Then there's the issue with uh, the vocal folds, and part of the shout is your vocal folds are going to be over-engaged. They're going to start to really compress and squeeze. You're, you're going to likely be engaging too much of that TA muscle, the muscle with inside, inside the vocal folds, and you want to give up some of that TA and let the CT begin to take over. Now, if you give up too much... Now you're on the flip side of that. It's too little muscle at the vocal folds. They're not, they're not thick and fat enough. They're just touching at the very edges, and that's going to give you a sound wave that doesn't have that, that bitey upper uh, harmonic content. And then when you, you send that to your resonators, no matter what you do with the vowel, it's just going to be weak. The, the sound wave itself um, doesn't have a mixed quality. So it's just finding that interplay between the two. Now, the of the two pair of muscles, the TA muscle is, they're the bullies. And they're, they're the ones that are going to tend to over-engage. So you may have to over-let go to the CT a little bit. But you want to begin to isolate vocal fold closure. And that can be done really well on uh, those semi-occluded sounds. The straw is really good for that, phonating through the straw. I have a straw warm-up course 
for free, just go to johnhenny.com. You can uh, see it there on the front page. Just click on the little um, artwork for that. But that the straw or lip bubbles that or even doing like an NG sound mm, as in hung, that will give you a little bit of back pressure that will help the vocal folds come together and um, maintain their position uh, for holding back the air without you having to over muscle and get over involved. So that can be a way to begin to build that balance of muscle. You're going to have to have a balance of resonance and a balance of muscle in order to get that to happen. Now, one of the big mistakes is just trying to rush this whole process. People get impatient. Their voice cracks. And I know it's frustrating. Um, this, this can be the most frustrating instrument of all. I've, I uh, played drums professionally. Uh, I can play piano well enough to teach. I fool around on guitar. But man, nothing has caused me more stress than the voice. The voice is just a really tricky, tricky instrument. It's like trying to dance on the head of a pin sometimes. And we get frustrated. And when you get frustrated, you're likely going to start falling to those extremes of the whoop and the yell. So you got to keep your patience. Now, having said that, some people get too cautious and then they just stay in this little cautious place where they're afraid to start opening up and leaning into it because they're so afraid of yelling. And these are often people who have maybe um, had a bit of vocal trauma uh, with, uh, with yelling. And so they're so afraid of going into that yell mechanism, or some people call it pulling chest, uh, that they just stay in this overcautious state. And that ultimately, you're not going to find your mix that way either. I mean, there, are, there is intensity uh, within mix. It's just not too much. Uh, the other thing that's tied in with that is, is people trying to copy their favorite singers. They're going to look at a singer or listen to a singer and hear this wonderful, huge sound, and then you're going to be tempted to make that. And the problem is you usually overshoot what the singer is doing. The singer is uh, a good singer, has these nuances of balance that you very often aren't hearing. And it sounds like this big, full, open sound. But if you listen closer, the vowel is probably a little more balanced than you think it is, maybe a little more rounded. There's some modification going on. Uh, the, the singer knows what they're doing. So this is a form of impatience as you're trying to jump to where that highly trained, highly experienced singer is. And again, you've, you've got to have patience. You can't rush this thing. Another mistake is not using unfinished sounds. Now, by unfinished sounds, I mean things like uh, the kind of dopey sounds, these low larynx uh, sounds, gee, 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 things like that. And what that'll do is that will stop you from going into that yell condition. Another handy unfinished sound are those, um, people will call them witchy, like nay, nay, nay. Uh, people call it pharyngeal. It's also called twang. You can find it if you want to do a real exaggeration, like quacking like a duck. And by vocalizing with those extreme sounds, you can actually keep some intensity going through this bridge area without over-muscling. It will, it will really uh, mitigate that falling apart. And so you can begin to find some security there. It's almost like, oh, here's a pathway that I can start to build on. So don't be afraid to use unfinished sounds. You just don't want to get stuck in them. And then finally, you need to pay attention to sensations. The sensations of singing are funny because they're misleading in that it's a false kinesthesia. It, your body is lying to you in terms of what is happening. We feel our voice going up and it's going behind and forward and back and all of these odd things. And students that don't pay attention to this usually have a bit more trouble. If you, if you have some pretty well-defined uh, mind-body awareness, you're likely going to do better at this. 
And I would encourage you when you find exercises that are that are working for you, really pay attention to the sensations. What are you feeling? Where is the sound going? How is it traveling? Where do you feel it most intensely? How does it change as you go from the low note to the high note and back again? Does it feel different on the way up than on the way down? And you really want to start cataloging these sensations. These sensations, um, as sometimes subtle uh, and misleading as they are, are really important to us. This is, this is how we uh, steer our instrument, or it's how we steer a great deal of our instrument. We also, of course, listen, but we're, we hear our voice in, in a funny way. The sound's traveling away from us, and it, the, the way we hear it through the bone changes as we go higher. There's, there's all different reasons why that can be misleading as well. So it's a combination of listening but really paying attention to these sensations. You've, you've really got to get these dialed in so that when you go to sing a note, in that split second before you sing it, you already know what that experience is going to be like. There's, there's no hesitation. There's no question mark. You know what it's going to be. So that's if you're having trouble finding your mix, that's what I want you to do. Just watch that you're not falling to the extremes of whoop or yell. Watch your vowels, that they're not too wide. Uh, pay attention to your vocal folds. Do some isolation exercises so you don't, you're not over-engaging or under-engaging and falling apart. Get some patience. Don't rush this. But then again, don't be too cautious for too long. Um, don't try and copy other singers too soon. Use some unfinished sounds uh, to help you along the way and pay attention to those sensations. Hey, if you want to know more about me and get more singing tips, please visit my website, johnhenny.com. I'm doing uh, some redesigns and uh, it's it's going along well. It seems to be getting uh, more traffic and uh, the way it's set up now, you there's actually little choices that you can go through that can guide you to the resources that will most help you. So please do check that out. Please sign up for my email list. I have um, specials that only go out to my email list. And so you'll want to keep up with that. And I'll let you know when new podcasts are out, et cetera. And check me out on YouTube, uh, John Haney Vocal Studio. I've been doing some of those Voice Teacher Reacts videos. Uh, I resisted that for a while, but I see they're actually, not only are they incredibly popular, they're actually a really good way to, to talk about voice concepts. So I'm quite enjoying that. And until next time, to better singing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.